Hello whiskey fans, today I'm going to have a day off and by day off I mean I'm going to review something that probably no one gives a damn about so there's a lot less pressure and I can sort of half ass it a little bit and today that thing is Charles McKinley's Shackleton so with this bottling they're kind of using Ernest Shackleton's name as a little bit of a, a marketing gimmick and I would guess they've probably done that possibly with Coltard Cash, but also because there is a contribution from the sales of this whiskey that will be made to the Antarctic Heritage Trust. This will support both the ongoing care of Shackleton's Antarctic base and the Trust's mission to conserve, share and encourage the spirit of exploration, a spirit embodied by Shackleton. So there's a little bit of a, a goodwill gesture there. It doesn't say how much of the sales that they're actually donating, but when you buy a bottle of this, hopefully you're doing a little bit of good, maybe? So for anyone that doesn't know, Ernest Shackleton was a very early 20th century Antarctic explorer, a British Antarctic explorer. He took part in and led several expeditions in Antarctica. Some of them were very successful, but not all of them. But like any decent Brit, he didn't let it get him down and he just got stuck in. The thing that a lot of nationalities don't understand about us Brits is that we are very modest. And that's why, throughout history, British people have tended to go out of their way to do things that are a little bit difficult. And that's because we don't like to succeed easily, because we don't want to have to brag about it later. So you quite often find that, especially British explorers, they'll often get almost all the way there. They've sort of done the hard bit, but they leave that last bit, they leave the achievement to someone else. Anyway, this Shackleton's whiskey is supposed to be inspired by the whiskey that was taken to the Antarctic by Ernest Shackleton in the very early 20th century. So they found a few crates of this whiskey that they took out there frozen in the ice and they shipped it back to civilization, got Richard Patterson involved, whose name is on the label, but from those defrosted bottles that were intact, they managed to deduce somehow that the whiskey that went into those blends was around 47.3 ABV. They think that it was most likely made at least partly with Orcadian peat, and I think at least partly because of the brand of whiskey that it was. It was this rare old Highland. They think that there would have been Glenmore in there, and we know that with this recreation, they've added some Dalmore single malt as well. Now, they mentioned that the original whiskey that they defrosted was 47.3%. This whiskey is not 47.3%, it is a flat 40. And as for other details on the label, I don't think it mentions colour, but almost certainly is, but probably not too much, in my opinion. There are, or were, some very limited edition bottlings of this Shackleton, which were bottled at 47.3 ABV. But again, this isn't those, this is the mass market release. So let's crack it open and see what we've got. Also mention, I don't know why I've kept this little tent thing that the, the distillery and the supermarkets think that we want. But there's actually some little recipes for mixed drinks, basically, on the actually on the inside of this. So there's a, a Shackleton Mule, you can probably guess what that is. An Explorer's Iced Tea, that's uh, a little bit ironic. So I'll just read one of them off. So they're saying that this whiskey, they recommend you start with 25 millilitres of Shackleton, add 12.5 mil of triple sec, so that's very precise, 20 mil of lemon juice, 10 ml of simple syrup, top with cola, and garnish with a wedge of lemon. So, started off bad there, and as soon as I got to top with cola, I thought, right, so you're basically telling us not to taste this whiskey, but we're not going to do that, because we do things properly here. I'm going to get some in the glass, and I'm going to taste it neat, and I'm going to see if it's any good. Right, on the nose, first things first, you can definitely tell that this is 40%. It's not strong, it's not bold, nothing really leaps out at you on the nose. I imagine that if, the, if you did drink this with cola, or even with ice, it's going to end up pretty neutral. You're not going to have much left at all, I would imagine. What you have got on the nose is actually some rather nice 
fairly mild but quite nice characterful farmy peaty notes and as always with pretty much any blended whiskey it's not going to be a peat bomb it's not going to be in isla territory but there's actually quite a nice farmy peaty character going on also getting some dry mineral barley notes some nice maltiness it's a little bit chalky on the nose it's actually got quite a bit of character for what aroma there is and what there also is on the nose is bucket loads of creamy fudginess there is a strong vanilla fudge note that mixes with that maltiness all the way through the nose of this whiskey although there is actually some rather nice fruitiness on the nose as well it's all rather mild like everything you do have to look for them but there's some quite nice juicy fruity berry notes and a little hint of melon let's see how it tastes so yet again on the palate the first thing you notice if especially if you're used to your 46 percent whiskies is that it is all a little bit thin and watery but again there's still some of that rather nice although rather mild slightly watery PT quality to this whiskey. There's a little hint of sootiness and a little bit of a mineral oil quality and a little bit of a musty lemon note runs it all off. Constantly throughout the palate of this whiskey you've got that dry fudgy maltiness similar to what I experienced on the nose and a slightly salty quality. And I'll be honest with you the juicy fruity berry notes in this whiskey are nice and unexpected but also the level of maltiness that you get in this is really rather nice as well it's going to have a little bit more and look at the finish so probably as you'd expect for almost anything bottled at 40 percent the finish is pretty short it's pretty simple and you've really only got a little hint of that maltiness that clings on and a slight salty grassy quality to the malt so it's not horrendous but it is over rather quickly and there's not that much going on on the late palate so what do i think of this shackleton's whiskey i think that the nose is actually pretty nice it's weak but it's nice the palate probably suffers more than the nose again the palate is nice but it is rather weak. All in all, I think this actually reminds me a little bit because of those juicy berry and melon notes, as well as the maltiness, reminds me a little bit of something like a Johnny Walker Green, but perhaps not quite as well blended and put together. All in all though, I would say this is probably better than Richard Patterson's average foray into the whiskey world, because I'll make no apologies in saying that I'm not the world's biggest fan of the White and Mackay group. As for a grade, I'm going to go with C-. As for how accurately this whiskey recreates that rare old Highland malt whiskey that Shackleton took to Antarctica a hundred years ago, I kind of struggle to think that this is too accurate. They did say in the promotional material for this whiskey that the whiskey that they analysed, they found it to be matured in American oak sherry casks. So they really think that there were bourbon casks involved in the original whiskey, but the profile of this one all seems a little bit too sweet and modern and bourbonized. From what I know about antique whiskey, which isn't a huge amount because it's really expensive and hard to find, this does just seem a little bit more modern and bourbonized than most of the antique whiskey that I've had. Also, and McKinley admit this, that being a full 7.3% weaker in ABV, this is going to be much weaker than what they took to the Antarctic as well. So it's probably a little bit of a pale imitation, although that's not to say that I don't like this one. I think that that mild peatiness mixed with that solid malty backbone actually makes this one of the better, cheaper, low-end supermarket blended whiskies that you can buy. I don't think this is as good as the, the Naked Gross, but it's also an entirely different thing. I don't think it's as good as Johnny Walker Green, but you can usually get this quite a bit cheaper. 
and especially if you can get this one on offer at about £20, as I did, I actually think it's fairly good value for money, providing you're okay with those weaker 40% ABV blends. So let me know in the comments what you thought of McKinley's Shackleton. Did you like it? And did you think they did a good job? Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.